Hello, Korean audience. Uh, my name is Isa Willinger. I'm the film director of Hi AI, Love Stories from the Future. Um, I was sent a couple of questions by the festival and I'm going to try to answer them. Um, so first question, there are many fiction and documentary films about robots and artificial intelligence. Is there any movie that inspired you to make this documentary? Um, not really. I actually was inspired by surrealism, I think, mostly surrealism in art and classical art. Um, by sort of that, fast, that sort of early modern fascination with the mechanical and with puppets. Um, I think those were actually my points of reference at the very beginning. Next question. The film um, is talking about in the future whether AI could replace certain human roles such as lovers, family members or office workers. What did you focus on the most when dealing with the subject? Well, to me, the, the thing that had the most potential for an observatory, observational documentary film um, was really human relationships. Um, and those, of course, are the most meaningful when they happen, you know, in a quite intimate setting, um, like home. Um, so when we meet a, a humanoid robot at a shopping mall, for example, or the lobby of a hotel, um, the kind of conversation, the kind of relation that uh, we can observe won't be very interesting because it will always remain very superficial. However, when we have a robot in a person's home um, and the person sort of lives with this, with this robot for a certain stretch of time, the kind of relationship that will develop um, would be much more intense and, and complicated, of course. Um, and so these were the settings uh, and the kinds of relationships that seemed to have the most potential to me. So did you have any particular direction in mind that you wanted the audience to sort of go into or any uh, particular perspective you wanted the audience to adopt? Um, not really. I was really striving for uh, ambivalence um, because on the one hand, um, artificial intelligence and robots um, is such is a topic that has so many unknowns and we really don't know uh, how this will change us as human beings, uh, what will happen to our societies, what will happen to human you know, psyche and so on. So um, for me, it was very important to sort of open up people's imagination and to not have them judge so easily and, and sort of you know, tap into their prejudices, um, but really sort of um, create an open space for the imagination and have you think because then, um, yeah, it is much more, much more interesting, you know, if this work of art sort of stays with you for a while in your mind and you just keep on going back to it and, and wondering about it and wondering um, about, you know, the, the things you saw and you experienced. Um, so that was, that was my sort of goal, um, openness and ambivalence. Next question. The character setting between Harmony and Chuck is very interesting. Harmony is kind of a sex robot with artificial intelligence and Chuck has a trauma having been sexually exploited. How did you choose these characters? Um, well, there aren't that many humanoid robots around that can actually, you know, live in, in sort of a people's home. Uh, um, it's still a very rare thing. Also, Pepper in Japan, it's not like he's in every household. Um, I think there's like a thousand uh, peppers that were sold to private uh, persons. Um, and Harmony also, I mean, she when we, when we were shooting, she was actually still in development. We were waiting for her for a long time so they would finish her and they kept on um, sort of... Uh, Pro prolonging it uh, more and more because of, you know she had many bugs and so on. So finally, we were able to shoot with a prototype, and Chuck was actually the first person in the w in the world, aside from the developers, who spent a whole week with her. And um, 
to me, it was a, more or less a coincidence. It was hard to find somebody that would let us film their first week with Harmony. And uh, I, I'm extremely happy that we found Chuck because he's such a great person and, and great protagonist. And he has so much empathy for Harmony. Um, and the fact that his story has the sort of, you know, these layers in it uh, is is also super interesting, I find, because it's so easy to judge somebody um, for, you know, doing something weird, like trying out a relationship with a robot. Um, it's something we would probably, you know, usually, um, you know, think, we would think somebody is really weird or a pervert, whatever. But um, in Chuck's case, we, we really learned that there can be um, experiences and motives um, that justify that. Um, so to me, yeah, it just his story actually added a lot of depth to it that I had not anticipated as a filmmaker. And often as a documentary filmmaker, you cannot, you know, um, you cannot sort of write the story and, and, and get it exactly the way you imagined it. You really, you really um, have to sort of dance with reality and, and see what, what you find. And that leads you also a certain, down a certain alley which is super interesting, I think. Is there anything you wanted to include or talk about in your documentary but couldn't? Um, actually, yes. We shot a second family in Tokyo, um, a second family that had Pepper at their home. And um, in the end, we, we couldn't keep them in, in the film um, because the focus was too much on Pepper then and, and too much on Tokyo. Um, but they were they were great as well, and they had uh, such a different relationship with Pepper. So for me, it would have been great to include um, more stories into the film, actually. But um, yeah, for certain dramaturgical reasons, that doesn't always work out then the way you want. In that case, I, I really regretted it that we couldn't sort of make them fit into the, the storyline of the film as well. People say that there will be no way back to the normal life after the COVID-19 crisis. The fact that we meet you online instead of in the theater shows the first changes of this era. What is your opinion on this matter? Um, I think, yeah, some things will probably um, be different uh, when this crisis has finished. Um, I think digitalization is getting a big push and um, I think for, for, for some events, we won't uh, need to physically meet any, any longer. I'm thinking of, you know, uh, work meetings um, uh, and also maybe, yeah, film festivals. I think um, we, we all know that flying is, is terrible actually for the planet. And I think if we fly less and, and meet more online, uh, you know, concerning short encounters, I think that's actually a good thing um, for sort of, real relationships like meeting friends and so on I, I think we will go back to to our old ways of meeting people for dinner and uh, for drinks uh, and, and and not only meeting them in front of our computers I think we're still human after all and I don't think that um, this crisis may last a couple of months or years uh, will change us completely in that respect but for shorter meetings and sort of more um, sort of, you know, practical work related things, I hope that we will uh, be able to keep that and, and meet more online. I think that's going to be a great thing, actually. All right. So thank you very much for listening and thanks for watching Hi AI. And um, I hope some of the things I uh, told you about my thought process and work process were interesting for you. Um, have a great day. Bye bye.